it's us again, and to continue with our uh, standard of elegance tonight, we present to you now Joshua Meander, the uh, host and founder of the poetry reading and the little magazine, Nomad's Choir. And Joshua has a tremendous reputation throughout the New York area for not only uh, fine poetry, but also integrity. And I'm very pleased to have Joshua along. Here's a little background about him. He started writing at age 19 after coming out of the hospital for having back surgery. Adversity is a great uh, spur to creativity. It's just the way it works out. He used to daydream of writing lyrics and starting a rock group like The Doors and Steppenwolf, or both at the same time. But he, after that, he decided that poetry was his love. And he just went right through it. And he's been exploring the culture of the city for years on end. He developed his own voice from experience and observation. And then in 1989, I believe it was, he Correct. started what became Nomad's Choir and developed his uh, reputation throughout the city. Joshua, welcome the poet, the poet. Glad to be here. Yes. Uh, what made you decide to not only write, but run a reading? I was kind of dissatisfied with some of the readings. I felt that the new people weren't given a chance. I would go to readings and it would be just features, and their friends would come, and the, uh, the people from the open reading were thought as nothing when they were very talented. So I said, I must stop my own reading and give the new people a chance. And how chancy were they? Very chancy. <laughs> some <laughs> of them were. But it's been going on for several years now. Four so years now. So the chance must have been worthwhile. Definitely. Let's have a poem. <laughs> Sounds good. This one is entitled, Where the Flowers Came From. Ever wonder where those flowers came from? The year-long floral pageant surrounding all-night grocery stores? Bleeding hues of pink, blue, and yellow, enticing every passerby. Alluring scents fill the air to stimulate growing romances. Petals so soft, just one touch can restore an ill-fated heart. Oh, how the colors sweat so vividly, stems so trim and steady, they exude patience. For the price of one bouquet is what a peasant was paid for toiling all week in the heat while muttering improvised prayers to cope with a short-tempered foreman who threatens people's livelihoods when a grueling deadline makes some pickers queasy. These flowers are for you, my dear friend. Embrace them delicately and treasure them. They came from the calloused hands of many pitifully underpaid laborers who put their all into each flower they picked. Do you find yourself influenced by music still? Oh, the rhythm. In poetry, there's, there's a rhythm. What gets the juices flowing? Classical music and jazz. Uh -huh. All right, got something jazzy in there? Something jazzy, as a matter of fact, I do. Uh -huh. It's entitled, There's Jazz in the Catacombs Tonight. <laughs> Whoa. Down the dark maze. The howl of a horn blows. There's jazz in the catacombs tonight. Cool vibes and a beat played right. Here, beatitude flows down the dark maze. Not where everyone goes, but an outcast knows. There's jazz in the catacombs tonight. A jam session in full flight. A melding of free-spirited prose down the dark maze. A wailing music of the night, saxophone mating calls and drum solos. There's jazz in the catacombs tonight. The bold stay till the morning light to catch the last note which glows down the dark maze. There's jazz in the catacombs tonight. Absolutely amazing. Let's, let's slip another one in. I don't want to shatter this mood. Okay. A little romance. A girl ah. I met in 1981. I just flirted with her, and this is how I met her. It's entitled, Blowing a Kiss to a Stranger. From across a crowded room, I blew a kiss to a stranger. 
She picked up on my gesture and did the same to me. We made plans for a date right on the spot. I guess we were both swept away by the fashion in which we met. Turned out she was an exile from a Latin country. She was the sole provider for her family. With her swarthy complexion, she could have been any race. Her nose twitched like an Eskimo, her eyes squinted like a China doll, and she moved like a Middle Eastern belly dancer. In a single day, we'd play out all the roles couples do. Gradually, her family persuaded her to stop seeing me, for they knew I was not the Marian kind. When she ended our fling, I was hurt, but I understood. You may attract someone in a carefree way, but it ends there. For responsibility must follow. Wherever you are, Josh would like to feature you. I'm not going to. Pardon? Wherever you are, Josh would like to feature you. Very, very important. Okay. All right, let's get to another poem there. Okay, how about something from the uh, current issue of Nomad Squire? Anybody we know? I'll read something of my own. This is what it looks like. That'll do. Poem on the do. back. And I have cut out art. It looks like this. Okay. This is entitled, I Follow That Echo. When you're away too long, my purpose in life diminishes. I wouldn't seek the arms of another and break our solemn vow. Before my thoughts of us blacken, I'm pleasantly distracted by what seems to be a strong sigh. The sound is repeating a faint, familiar word. By now, I am spellbound. So, I must follow that echo. As I get nearer, the sound gets clearer. Inwardly, I knew it would lead me straight to you. Girl, you don't know how long I've prayed for someone with your uncommon grace. I've been praying for things like that for quite some time. <laughs> I want to ask you, yes. Joshua, I gather that you started the reading in the magazine simultaneously. That's correct. But if circumstances dictated that you could only do one or the other, the reading series or the magazine, which would you choose? Which, which gives you the most satisfaction? The written, the uh, printed word. The magazine. Right? Yeah, because if someone doesn't get what you said, they can read it again. In fact, poetry should be read several times. It's like a ritual. All right, let's, let's slip a little something in then. Okay, a little trip to Arizona. Ah. My tour guide said, you're going to see other realities. And I said, I'm going to use that for the title. <laughs> other realities. Relentless road cutting through vast prairie took my jeep on a journey to other realities in the land of tall cactus and smoky rouge sunsets, the coyotes' footprints in the desert, my first signpost to the cosmic theatrics that followed. The essence of the universe wavered through towering canyons, and I had the sensation of rebirth the mornings I bathed in chilly creeks below palace-like rock formations. The highlight of my odyssey was a rainbow after a hailstorm because that colorful event was shared with an earthbound angel and she accepted my embrace unconditionally. Ah, uh, you know what happened when I took a tour of Arizona? What happened, Robert? My tour guide said I was going to see souvenir stands. Of course, I took the budget tour. Fortunately, we don't have any budget poetry tonight, so let's have another dazzler. How about a trip to Paris? Kentucky? Via, no, uh, Paris, France. Ah. Via 1991. It's entitled Memorial Playground. Cobblestone path along timeless river where bittersweet taste of old Europe abounds. Chrome cold bistros line the scenery, upsetting this memorial playground to yesterday's barons and legendary lovebirds. Police sweep the dispossessed out from the eyes of tourism, yet ragged misfits still wedge themselves under bridges like grim mice. The same mighty bridges 
that historical figures marched over so pompously, elevated by the dawn of revolution. Art dealers housed depictions of poverty, selling them for a price that could rebuild crumbling lives. For starters, the meek descendants of a long dead painter whose articulations are preserved for their revenue only. Else they would fade away like the dwindling number of architectural elegance standing today. Don't ask me what happened to me in Paris. Uh, rather, okay. I would like to ask, what is the oddest thing that ever happened to you at a Nomad's Choir reading? I was at a different reading once where a feature actually set fire to the rug. Not intentionally, mind you, and I was just wondering if you had anything comparable. Well, the oddest thing is we occasionally have people off the street who we don't know. This person came in and said, everyone in this room is a robot and you're controlled by the government. <laughs> so someone said, well, then you too. He says, no, I'm different. Uh, was he able to explain why he was different? No, no, he was in his own world. He said his poetry is better than everyone else's. He must read first. I said, well, then you're not going to read at all. Ooh, you know? really? All right. I let him read, but that's what he said, that crazy <laughs> statement. Well, it's, it's a poem of sorts. Um, we can get in one more poem, I think, that explains your little world. Okay, my little world, sometimes I read about other people's worlds. Uh -huh. I read the biography of Charlie Chaplin, and I said, I can write a poem about him. This is entitled, Charlie Chaplin as the Tramp. Black and white moving pictures flip rapidly before my eyes to the tempo of quick pantomimes. On the movie screen, an impish tramp wearing the most ridiculously ill-fitted suit waddles to and fro like a duck on pep pills, evoking sympathy and tremendous laughter from every pedestrian he addresses. And when he bumps into someone, he tips his tiny derby at the person. Much of life's cold truth is expressed from him when he wriggles his lips that support his black toothbrush-sized mustache. While desperately trying to win over the ladies, he often steps on the toes of authority with his floppy, oversized shoes. Charlie Chaplin will always be remembered as the cane-swinging, distinguished tramp with the heart of an overactive altar boy. Had it not been for that chemistry, he would have become a forgotten clown. Ah, uh, do you have any movie ambitions, Josh? No, no, I like to be known for my word. That's it. Okay, that's great. Joshua Meander, I want to thank you for being on Poet to Poet. Yes, I also want to thank Roslyn Raven. I feel an attack of the hiccups coming on. I'm going to do something <laughs> ominous now. Doomsday falls on Tuesday next. Doomsday falls on Tuesday next, croaked the cockeyed clairvoyant. Now I'm well and truly hexed, and my spirit's less than buoyant. Why does it have to be this Tuesday? I'm not prepared, not really. All my finances are in disarray, and I'm running low on chili. My hamper is filled with dirty socks. Must get my marigolds their mulch. Must clean out my safe deposit box. Must reupholster the couch. So much to do before the final puff of smoke. I just can't stand the tension. Say, if I file the pink form early enough, do you think I can get an extension? Well, I don't think we're going to be able to get an extension at this time. So once again, I will thank Joshua Meander and Roslyn Raven. And for Poet to Poet, this is Robert Dunn saying until next time, bon voyage. <laughs>